Hello, everyone. Welcome to Stanford Transportation's webinar, How to Route and Where to Ride. We welcome you here today. Uh, my name's Ariadne Scott. I'm the Assistant Director of Active Mobility at Stanford. I manage the Stanford Bike, bike Program, which I think all of you know is a designated platinum uh, bike-friendly university by the League of American Bicyclists. We were the first to be recognized in 2011 and just received our third renewal, so we're proud of that. But we couldn't have done it without all of you who uh, support our bike activities and promote bike safety and our active commuters on the campus, so we thank you. Um, I personally have been car free for over 20 plus years, and I also serve as a board member for the People for Bikes Foundation. So we welcome you here today. I'm going to turn this over to Anna, our colleague from Bikes Make Life Better. She's going to review the agenda and do a, a self intro, and then we'll get started. Awesome. Thanks, Ariadne. So as R mentioned, I am marketing and communications manager for Bikes Make Life Better. We partner with Stanford to do bike programming and education like this. In fact, we've done tons of webinars this year, especially as everyone is sheltering in place at home. So check them out on the website if you haven't already and sign up for the ones that we have coming up. So I manage bike programs for Silicon Valley clients mainly, including Stanford. And I personally love bikes. I've been car free for 10 years. I live in San Francisco and I go everywhere by bike. So that means I occasionally put my bike on BART or Caltrain to get over some of those long distances in the Bay Area. Okay, so what are we doing today? This is all about routing. So we're gonna go over choosing a route, kind of what makes for a good route, especially if you're a new rider. Uh, the next step is route resources, including the Thing that I use all the time, even when I'm, you know, just biking places around my community that I haven't been before, which is Google Maps. So I'll do a demo of how to route yourself using Google Maps. We'll also go over some alternative route resources. There's a lot of apps out there that people like using. You might have heard of Strava, for instance. So we'll talk a little bit about those things. Um, and then um, we're going to go over some regional routes and paths, just that I personally like. Uh, this is to inspire you to get out there and ride, especially right now. I've been getting a lot of questions about where do I ride or where do I ride with kids or I'm looking for a fun ride. I just started biking again. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And then we'll have time at the end for some Q&A. A little bit of housekeeping. Make sure if you do have questions as we go through the content, you can use the Q&A and we'll try to answer them. And then we'll also follow up with a, a more uh, documented Q&A of all the questions answered beforehand and during the webinar too. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, awesome. Definitely send us your questions. Uh, okay, so question is, what makes for a quote unquote good route? And this is a lot of personal preference. I have some people that want to get to where they're going the most efficient way possible, even if that means sharing the road with cars more, and then other people really want to avoid traffic. And especially if you're a new rider and you're not used to riding with cars, especially if they're going quite fast, it's good to find routes that are car free or car light. So here are some things that you can look for in that instance. The first thing I like to do is try and find fully bike and pedestrian only paths. So bike paths and also bicycle boulevards. There are some bicycle boulevards that exist in the Bay Area. And these are just streets that are usually closed off to cars at the intersection so they can't use them as a thoroughfare local traffic only. So if people are living on the street, they can get in. But it makes it easier for cyclists to sort of go through, um, go, go through the entire route and use it as a thoroughfare. There's lots of these in Berkeley, actually. Berkeley has some great bike boulevards and also Portland, Oregon. But I think also around um, Redwood City on the peninsula, there's some great bike boulevards too. Um, other, other options are no or low traffic streets. So streets where, streets where their speed limits are, are low <laughs> tend to be better. And then um, streets with bicycle infrastructures. So protected bike lanes are my favorite kind of bike lanes. Sometimes they are protected with a barrier between, um, you know, the bike lane and the cars using like planters or cement bollards or actual soft hit poles, which are just kind of poles, um, usually white and reflective, that just physically separate cyclists from cars. Um, they actually feel safer to cyclists too. There was just a study done by the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition and uh, the Mineta Transportation Institute, which showed that if there's a physical barrier, people feel much more safe riding, even if it's like a soft hit pole. So that's pretty, um, pretty desirable in terms of routing. Um, you know, bike lanes themselves, basically the kind that are shown on the bottom left of the screen, 
green paint um, just indicates that cyclists live here <laughs> or ride here and drivers should take heed. Uh, the, the least best kind of bicycle marking infrastructure is something called a sharrow, and that's shown in the middle of the screen. It's basically an arrow with a, a bike symbol at the bottom. And that indicates that this route is a designated bike route and drivers and cyclists need to share the road. And the efficacy of these things is debated, but um, usually these will designate routes that are mainly good and mainly flat through different areas. So um, I, I like taking them uh, when there's nothing else. <laughs> of course, like the least good option would just be like a road with no shoulder <laughs> and no way to um, to really maneuver safely. So we want to try and avoid those those routes. Also routes that kind of cross over like really busy streets or don't have a designated crossing like a bike bridge over an intersection. Um, those are good things to try and avoid. You might have to kind of go out of your way to find these routes, but I usually think it's worth it. It's just a better experience when you're not stressed out about traffic. Uh, of course, if you want to get there quickly, um, just know that you are a, a technically a vehicle, so you can share the, the lane. You can actually take the full lane. Um, if there's no safe infrastructure, like you know a, a shoulder where you feel like you can maintain three feet of distance between yourself and the car. Um, some other things to look for that are great uh, bike boxes. This is shown as the other image in the middle of the screen. It's a, it's a left turn box that's like positioned a little further out from the bike lane. And that makes it so that you're really visible to cars who actually have to stack up behind you when you're taking a left turn. So I really like seeing some of that bike infrastructure that's going in a lot of places in the bay. And then you also just want to look for routes that are free from hazards. So if you know that construction's going on in an area, I might avoid that section of the route just because there tends to be debris and stuff that might puncture your tires. Also train tracks are hazardous for cyclists, especially new cyclists. Something to remember is if you're going over train tracks, just hit them head on, completely perpendicular. Um, that makes ensures that your tire won't get stuck in the track groove, which causes you to stop and then plots. <laughs> also we like, usually like flat routes, unless you're really, really into climbing and you want to get that workout in. I understand, I also like climbing. Um, and then paved surfaces. So routes with lots of potholes, especially if you're on a road bike with skinny tires are usually not as fun. So these are some things to look for when you're, you're looking to route yourself somewhere. Okay, so how to choose a route. Actually, I'm going to go to Google Maps for this portion of the webinar. And I'll show you what I do when I am trying to find a route to a new place. And I'm actually pretty directionally challenged. <laughs> so I use this all the time. Um, you know, even when I'm going from say the Caltrain station to Stanford's campus, and we'll actually do that as an example. So California Ave Caltrain. Oops. There we go. So I'm gonna make that my starting point, my point A, and it's right there. Sometimes I use that, sometimes I use the Palo Alto station, but just for the purposes of this demo, we're gonna use California app. So then I go to the directions button right here on the left-hand side of the screen, click directions. You can see that Cal Ave is, is, lo is listed as my point B, my destination, so I need to switch that. So you can use these arrows to toggle between the origin and the destination. So I'll do that. And then I need to put in my destination. So in this case, I want to go to uh, White Plaza. So it's right in the center of Sanford's campus. Maybe I need to do a bike tabling event there. So cool. You can see that this populates some routes for me to choose from. Um, it has me currently, it, has, it selects a route that it likes the best. Um, and it usually likes that route the best for algorithmic reasons. So Maybe that's what most cyclists are doing when they're recording uh, what other people have done. Um, maybe it has the most bike infrastructure on it. Um, I should actually look into what Google does when it thinks about what route to, to give to you. Um, this route's completely fine. It goes along Sarah Street and it has like, you know, the roundabout here and then it kind of goes, weaves through campus to White Memorial Plaza. So perfectly acceptable route. I actually um, like going through the kind of the athletic center. So I might take that route and drag it, which you can do with any of these routes. So it kind of routes you a different way. Um, so I'd actually know that that's not along El Camino. There's a little path right here, so that's okay. Um, and everything else looks great going along Park Boulevard. That's a nice bike friendly street. So um, so yeah, we're gonna take, we're gonna decide to take that route. So when you go down here, you can click on the route and it'll give you turn by turn directions, which is pretty cool. 
can print these out. You can send them to your phone by clicking that icon right there. You can email them to yourself. It's all very helpful. You can also click on this icon to get the link, copy the link, you can share it on Facebook or Twitter. <laughs> um, so if you have a friend you're writing with, you can copy that link and send it to them and it'll just pop, populate this map, which is really helpful. You can also print directions, which is really nice. So going back to the route itself, um, you can also see the, the topography. So if you click on this little uh, toggle right here, see it's mostly flat. There's 79 feet of up and seven feet of down, making for a pretty flat route. Uh, also, you can see the mileage right there. And if you want to change it to kilometers, <laughs> you can go here and change your distance units. You can also choose routes that avoid ferries, <laughs> which I'm not sure if there's other things that populate depending on the, the places you're, uh, you're going, but there's, there are some options that you can choose. Another cool thing is that you can add a destination. So if you were going somewhere else after you went to White Plaza, you can add it and um, it'll route you there. So it'll be A, then B, then C. So that's pretty cool. So the, the really cool thing about Google Maps it's actually, I'll go back. It's actually this, uh, this menu item right here, the three little bars on the top right-hand corner of your screen. So you click that, you get a lot of cool options, but probably the coolest is bicycling. So you click bicycling and voila, you get all of the routes, the bike routes, bike-friendly infrastructure routes, anything that would be more pleasant to cycle on than not are populated right here. And Stanford, of course, has so many great bike routes and infrastructure. So you can, oops, <laughs> so you can see um, down at the key, trails are in dark green. So kind of right here are some trails. Um, dedicated lanes are in regular green. So you can see there's dedicated lanes all over campus. And then bicycle friendly roads are in dotted lines. So kind of around here, I think Park Avenue might have been one of those, can't tell. Um, and then dirt and unpaved roads are in kind of a a reddish brown color. I don't think there's really any of those in this area, but that might be fun to, to check out as well. So Google Maps is really the greatest way to get where you need to go, especially if you're new to writing. Uh, I use it all the time. I actually don't bother too much with the apps. I find that Google Maps provides me with everything I need to get there. When I send it to your phone or when you look it up on your phone, you can use navigation and then you'll hear turn by turn directions. Remember only one ear covered. You can ride with one ear covered, not both. That's not legal. Um, but I don't even have to like handle my phone. I just put it in my pocket, put one earbud in and then it, it routes me through the navigation that I need to go through. Um, and then just the last thing I'll mention is that you can switch to satellite view and kind of see some of the some of the more major landmarks and stuff. So you can see, I can check to make sure I'm going the right way, right past the swimming pool here. Yeah, totally. Um, you can also see if there's anything that you might want to avoid, like busy intersections, train crossings, you know, stuff like that. Uh, okay, Ara, is there anything I've forgotten? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Thing to add, um, if people are coming to campus during COVID, um, if you haven't read, and we'll include the link and the information in our Q&A, the campus has set up designated green zones where they, have, where they have identified where the public can come into the campus, and they're restricting a sort of the inner campus near White Plaza or where the students will be. And so just, you can follow the signage, but just so you know, um, you're allowed to walk and bike through the area. And I'll send along the tips and suggestions for coming to campus. Um, just maintain um, social distancing, keep six feet away, and, and you should be fine. And then of course, as Anna mentioned, just make sure you follow all of the rules of the road and make sure you stop at the stop signs too. Awesome. Yeah, I love that Stanford has those spaces designated for, for their cyclists and pedestrians during this time. So cool, all right, we'll continue on. So I mainly went through everything that we talked about during the demo, but um, just as a, one quick reminder, if you're going to be routing yourself for your commute, it's always, or even any sort of ride, if you haven't done it before and you're a little nervous about it, that's totally normal. It's always good to test ride a new route when you're not under a time crunch. So. You have 9 a.m. meetings to make and it's like going to stress you out, try the route on the weekend. And then you can also make adjustments. So if you see that you don't like a segment of it, you can make a little reroute and then it'll just be much, much easier, much more pleasant day of. All right. So beyond Google Maps, there's tons of resources out there for you. 
Um, and this is just a little mini agenda slide, but um, we have everything from city and county bike route maps to local bicycle coalition that has a lot of great resources. I'll of course talk about all the apps. So Strava, RideSpot, and Ride with GPS. These apps do different things. So based on what you're looking for, you'll get a different experience. Um, local bicycle club rides are also a wealth of routes and fun rides in the Bay Area as are local bike shops. And then there's just some sites that you can go to to find some rides. So I, uh, I've been, I, I, in the beginning of the pandemic, I was riding way more than I am right now. I'm, I'm recovering from an unfortunate injury. But um, these are just photos from my time um, riding through San Jose, uh, which has lots of great bike routes. I had never like been in San Jose other than maybe one time at the Computer History Museum or something. Um, but there's like the Guadalupe River Trail, the Stevens Creek Trail, there's all these off-road paths that are so great. Uh, and then my bike group um, started riding in a socially distanced way. And this is us at China Camp in the North Bay uh, and then also Mount Sutro in San Francisco. So um, I was, you know, I'm a crusty <laughs> old bike commuter and I was even inspired during the pandemic by some new routes. So definitely get out there and enjoy the, the area we have. We have such great, such beautiful places. All right, so the first one, city and county maps. So uh, the cool thing about these particular resources is the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition has fully collected all of the city regions, city regional maps, and even some like other category maps for you. So you can go to that link. It's the first link listed there and find yours. In the bottom left hand corner of the screen, I have the Mid Peninsula Bicycle Map, which shows you East Palo Alto, Menlo Park, Palo Alto, and Stanford. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, Stanford University has its own bikeways map, and that's shown on the right hand side of the screen. It gives you like all of the bike routes um, and some other cool stuff like where the bike cages are located. Um, this is a safe place that you can put your bike. Also, where the uh, bike repair stands are located. These are uh, stands that are, you know, they're freestanding. They have tools available for you to fix your bike and also a pump if you get a flat or you need to pump up your tires. So those are all around campus as well. Uh, Ara, what have I forgotten on that one? Um, public safety, um, and we'll include all the links to these maps. We no longer print the Mid Peninsula or the Stanford Bike Waste map. They're all online, but we'll send you the links. And then also if you're riding at campus during darkness um, or at night, um, public safety at Stanford has issued a suggested routes a travel route map that's really helpful too. It sort of aligns with the blue towers in case you get stuck or need help, but they uh, route you to the main roadways through the campus too. So we'll make sure we include all, the, all of those links and the resources that we send out after the event. Awesome. All right. So moving on, bicycle coalitions. Uh, your local bike coalition will have a wealth of information, um, but a lot of them also have suggested routes or fun routes um, to, to check out. So our Backyard Bike Coalition is the Silicon Valley Bike Coalition and we're really lucky to have them because they have so many great resources for you, including a popular routes library. So that's shown on the bottom left hand side of the screen. There's just lots of different um, regions you can click on. So Cupertino, Menlo Park, Milpitas, uh, and then they show kind of the specific destination, the, the origin, and then also give you a link to a, like a turn by turn directions with maps. So that's pretty cool. East Bay also, East Bay Bike Coalition also has some great ones. So I included a, an example of that on the right hand side of the screen. That's the uh, Iron Horse Trail, Livermore to Concord. So it's a really fun trail. I actually haven't been on it yet, but I've been, I've been meaning to. So bike coalitions exist all over the place. There's one up in Marin County. There's the San Francisco Bike Coalition. I didn't include those. Um, just because San Francisco actually doesn't have any routes. <laughs> they have a bike map that you can buy, which is helpful, kind of not helpful. So I would just use Google Maps if you're going to be in San Francisco. And then Marin just, you know, I, I didn't check it, but Marin is sort of the home of the bicycle. So they, they definitely have a great bike coalition up there. All right, so route resources apps. <laughs> so there's three real big apps and you've probably heard of at least one of them, if not all of them. Uh, the first one is Strava. <laughs> you, you also might have heard people say, you know, Strava didn't happen. What they mean by that is if you didn't record your ride using Strava, it might as well have not happened. We can't see it. We can't see how you uh, crushed your segments. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. Um, so uh, it's usually, a, you know, it's a joke, but um, I've 
I actually, I don't use Strava very often. Uh, I find it much more enjoyable just to bike around, but you might like Strava if you're really into metrics. So if you really want to see, you know, how fast you're going, like mile an hour, mile an hour average rolling. So without stops, like how fast are you going on your ride? How many miles did you go? What was the, uh, the elevation gain and the decline? Um, you know, I think even also get other, get, get other metrics as you, as you need them. Strava is also a place where you can kind of low key compete with people. <laughs> so they have segments, really popular segments on different routes. Um, and then they have a leaderboard that shows who is the best or the fastest at a, you know, in a particular segment. So it's, it's a way to like, you know, track yourself, uh, you know, keep tabs on others, compete a little bit, friendly competition. Uh, you can also give your friends kudos and stuff. Um, and I will actually go over that right now as a quick demo. You guys cannot make fun of my Strava account because I'm really not as uh, prolific there. But here's, here's my Strava. As you can see, it's, it's a little bare bones. I have I'm following six people and five friends. Um, but this is kind of the landing page. So if you go to activity, activity feed, uh, it'll, it'll populate with uh, things that your friends are doing. And I see my, my friend James did a pretty cool ride up, up north and he's based in like the Southeast Bay. So I'm going to give him kudos by giving him a thumbs up right there. Um, you can also, you know, see your activity as well. If you go to your, your profile and it'll show some of the pictures I've posted. So these were some of the rides I took. Uh, during my time in San Jose, I thought it was, I was really inspired to take photos and I haven't, I haven't done any rides really since then. Um, and if you scroll down, you can see some of your activities. You can see I was doing way more here. Got a little bit of activity in the summer and then uh, unfortunately got an injury in mid-July. So I haven't been doing any biking. Um, but these are my last two rides. My friend tagged me in them. Uh, we went to Golden Gate Park for my birthday and we went uh, up Su Mount Sutro and you can see there's lots of cool stats. So this is like 9.7 miles, but over a thousand feet of climbing and it took about an hour and a half. So it was a pretty, pretty good fitness ride. Um, so yeah, and then you also have some of your stats that are posted on the uh, right side of the screen. So I would recommend Strava for people that really want to see what they're doing. They really like data. They want to track themselves. They want to, you know, see what their friends are doing. It is actually a great place to find a bike community. Um, I would say that if you're going to be tracking your rides, you should probably get a Garmin. A Garmin is a bike computer or any sort of bike computer um, because that way you won't drain your phone battery when you're trying to track your rides um, on your, on your, you know, when you're biking. Uh, you also just won't be like messing with your phone during your ride, which is like usually a good thing. Um, so a lot of people who use Strava also have a bike computer. I don't personally, <laughs> that's not how I roll, but uh, totally cool if you do. Uh, and then uh, the other thing Strava isn't that great for is route building. Um, so I think you have to, if you want to build a route, it's like a premium membership that you have to pay for, which I don't know, doesn't uh, work for a lot of people. Um, and it's also really not good at for finding routes, like I find their mapping functions to be pretty lacking. Like that's pretty much all you get when you uh, when you get a map. So you can kind of see the route, but you can't really, and you can zoom in and see streets, but it's really not that user friendly. And it doesn't have turn by turn directions. And um, it does it does show the elevation in great detail, which is pretty helpful. But um, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for, for routing really at all. Uh, you can't get inspired and get ideas here, but um, we'll talk a little bit about the other two apps. First one is Ride with GPS. Oh, do I have to log in? <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Uh, I'll also note that all of these require a, uh, a user account. They're free. Um, some of the features are premium, like with Strava, but it's usually not a huge deal. Um, you should note that your data might be used for some purposes. They will never use your personal data as far as I know, but you know, Strava will aggregate data. And oh. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you should know that um, your data might be shared in aggregate form with like a municipality, or I know that Strava releases a heat map 
every year a global heat map where it shows where the most heavily traveled you know bike routes or corridors are that's pretty pretty exciting so just check their data privacy um, policies when you sign up and just know that that might be a thing but anyway okay so here is ride with gps so ride with gps is really good for routing it's probably my favorite of the three apps for routing so you can find routes here and uh have some search oops have some search criteria so let's look at palo alto see what we got cool so uh these are within 50 miles of palo alto so not exactly kind of where you know not not fully localized but you know i do really like the pescadero loop so let's click on that you can see that users have uploaded like gorgeous photos beach views redwood forests it's not exactly a beginner ride it's 67 miles with 6,500 feet of climbing so that that will do you that would do me in <laughs> for sure but here's the cool thing about this uh, it gives you a really really detailed map so you can see where there's parking you can see oops well, I guess it doesn't want to show me that there, there that's a water symbol so where there's water um, you know where there's aid stations there's some info um, icons and then like Here's food. If you're like sugar crashing, you can stop at this grocery store. Even restrooms are posted, which is like extremely helpful, especially during this time. Um, so it'll give you some route details, which I find really helpful. This one's very descriptive, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then you can, uh, oops, let me move that over. Then you can uh, you can do send send to your device. So that'll that'll send it to your phone. Oops. Or you can view the standard route with QSheet. I find this to be really helpful. Oops, if I can scroll correctly. So here's the QSheet. You can show the full QSheet and it'll, it'll say exactly what the turn, di turn directions are. You can send this to your phone and get you know audio directions as well, which is really cool. Elevation has, it's like similar to Strava, really detailed um, up and down. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty great. You can also it looks like share the route or pin the route. Um, you can also build routes in in Ride with GPS, and we'll go over that because we don't really have time. Um, but really, if you're looking for routes, this is one of the better apps to do it in. And then the last one I'll talk about is Ride Spot. Ride Spot is an app from People for Bikes, which is a national bike advocacy organization. We really like them. They do great work in the land of bikes. So here's my ride spot profile. <laughs> Again, not very popular or prolific here. Um, but so basically organizations can join this and upload rides. There's lots of bike shops and the aim is just to connect those with bikes to great rides and routes. That was something that the organization found lacking in the US. So they wanted to try and, and make a, an app that was specific to that. So Summit Bicycles is in our backyard. We'll click on that one. Cool. Sorry, my computer must load. So you can see that this bike shop has loaded some pretty cool rides. Um, this one looks very long, Half Moon Bay Loop. Um, Summit to Downtown Half Moon Bay. We'll click on that one. So again, it's a bit of a slog, so <laughs> you know, a lot of climbing and a lot of mileage, um, but you do get a you do get a, a great route. And um, I'll show you my favorite thing. You can download the GPX or the uh, TCX. GPX is just like the turn by turn directions, um, and then you can feed that to your bike computer or even your phone. Um, and this I think is more fitness related, so just related to your fitness metrics. Although I'm not sure, I've not used it. My favorite is it's very old school, but download the PDF ride card. So if you click it. What will show up is a great PDF with a nice picture, a QR code, so you can scan it and have the ride pop up on your phone. If you're doing a group ride with friends, that's also really helpful. And then it has this printed cue sheet. So it's nice to keep as a fail safe if your phone cuts out or if you just, you know, you want to send this to friends who are riding with you. I find this really, really helpful. Um, but we will go back to the presentation. Anna, we had one question coming in. If you could recommend 
um, any phone holders. And um, there's so many on the market today and there are so many different types of phones, but there's a couple resources that we'll share in the Q&A. One is by Gear Lab that just recently reviewed 25 phone holders. So we'll let you make the selection, but um, there's a lot out there. And then just be mindful of not being distracted if you do have your phone on your handlebars. I know personally, I don't have a phone holder. I'll tuck my phone turn up the volume in case I hear it ring, I might, you know, I pull over and answer the phone, but just be mindful of the safety issues with talking on a cell phone and riding your bike. And as Anna mentioned, you can have one ear covered, but not both ears. So you could technically get sighted having both ears covered when you're riding your bike. Yeah, that's a great reminder. And you know, I am not as privy to the best phone mounts. Uh, I know there's lots of different options out there. So yeah, you can check out the, the follow-up we'll send out later that'll have a link to some of the good ones or some of the reviewed ones. Um, all right, cool. So I went over the big, the big three for apps. There's all kinds of other resources out there. One place I like to check when I'm looking for rides is club rides. There's a local group called Western Wheelers that has a great route library and like divided by skill level. So you can check that out. Um, again, our great backyard Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition has all of the clubs organized. So you can go and check and see if there's one in your area specifically. So you have a great, you know, origin starting out point. Your local bike shop also may offer social group rides. And this is more in the before times um, and probably when we're a little bit more social, <laughs> more into like being, being together and gathering, but you can check in with your local shop and they might have some good recommendations or they'll be doing a group ride, um, you know, 20, 2021 <laughs> or something like that. I can give a plug for your local bike shop. Today officially is sort of the bike to work day, bike everywhere day, but your local bike shop might have a stash of these bike to work day bags for 2020. Due to COVID, as you know, all the plans for the Bay Area wide bike to work day were sort of put on hiatus and it's gone virtual. So um, do stop at uh, apparently they gave a small uh, amount to local bike shops and also to local libraries. So today would be a good day to get out and ride if you can. I know COVID presents many challenges, but one uh, silver lining is that a lot of people are riding. Um, bike shops are thriving with increased bike sales and more families are riding because it's a great family sport and it's a good thing to do under shelter in place. Yeah, definitely. It's cool you got a you got a bike bag. Uh, I'm a little jealous, but uh, <laughs> all right. Um, so the next thing to talk about is just you know sometimes Google is the best option for trying to find a ride. I've found a lot of great rides by just googling best Bay Area rides. Um, but so some of my findings from those sort of searches. Uh, first is Rails to Trails. It's an organization. It's a national organization that wants to create a comprehensive trail network in the United States. And usually they use old railroad grades that are, have been abandoned because they make for perfect you know, paths, trails. They already have a route cut out that's usually away from cars. Um, so they have a Bay Area Trails Collective, which is a subset. And you can see on this map on the slide that they are looking to connect the Bay Area with trails in this way. So the existing trails are in green and you can hop on those right now and they're car free and awesome. And then the proposed trails are in orange, so fingers crossed we get those we get those soon because, man, I would really like like to ride you know north, south, east, west, all over without uh, having to deal with traffic, and I'm sure some of you would too. Just a couple others are listed here. Found some great rides in the bold italic, SFist, which is a culture rag, uh, and then also Weekend Sherpa. Weekend Sherpa has a lot of great hiking, biking um, options all over NorCal. So if you're willing to travel even a little bit you can find some really beautiful rides listed there. Okay, and then to sort of uh, curate some of my favorites for you, I created a little recreational route starter kit. So these include some routes that are really iconic and popular, and then also, you know, some that are completely car free, uh, and then others that I just, I haven't even done, but I, they're on my list to do. So um, can, you can go to the link right here and I'll do that right now. Let me see if I can, oops. Nope, oh, that's not right. Okay, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go check that out really quick. 
It's actually my maps, but the link on the um, the link on the slide should work. Uh, this is my route I made, and this is like the editing. You, you know, we'll go into a preview mode. So this is this is the view you would see. Yes. Um, but basically, you can click on any of these routes. So this is a one of my favorites, Crystal Springs, and it'll take you to the uh, the link. So these routes are pretty precise. Like I tried to be exact about all of the directions, but just to make sure you have the right route, I would click on it and then use the the website. Uh, to go there. But uh, basically, I have Paradise Loop up here, which is really popular. Lots of great views of the bay. Something called the Butter Lap in San Francisco, which is like a it, in the before times, a lot of people used to get together after work on Wednesdays. I like this route because it kind of stays off route the roads in San Francisco, which is really nice. Uh, Crystal Springs is great. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. This is the Bay Trail, which is also one of my favorites. Uh, we have a great route from Mountain View Caltrain Station to Stanford um, using a lot of bike infrastructure. And this is one I discovered only three months ago, the Guadalupe River Trail. Really beautiful. You can go from like South San Jose all the way to Alviso in the north, which is a, a marina ghost town. It's kind of fun to see. And the East Bay, this is the Iron Horse Trail. Haven't done it. It's supposed to be beautiful. Um, and then all the way down in Morgan Hill, we have the Uvis Reservoir Loop, which I haven't done, but it's supposed to be beautiful. So this is just to like get you started. If you're looking for a, a fun ride in your area, these are all great options. Um, R, did you want to add anything? Just a few tips. Um, I know the Iron Horse Trail and I know Uvis um, near Gilroy. <laughs> just yeah. if you go in the summer, go in the morning because it's <laughs> very, very hot and dry. <laughs> and also on that um, Guadalupe Trail down south, there's rattlesnakes that sort of lay in the middle of the pathway. So the first time I saw them, I was totally freaked out. So just be aware, they usually are off to the side. They won't bother you, but occasionally they'll just be sleeping in the sunlight. So um, just maybe check the weather forecast. We live in the Bay Area. There's so much diversity in our climates. Um, San Francisco can get really cool, even though, you know, the Stanford area might be really hot. So um, just make sure you're prepared and equipped and have a lot of water. Yeah, I encountered my first snake when I was in San Jose area. It was just on this like ridge trail that was like, you know, kind of over suburban houses. And I, I honestly looked at it for 15 minutes before I decided I was just going to like ride past really fast. I have no idea what to do. Actually, don't, don't do what I did. Probably take a lot more caution. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's true. Rattlesnakes are a thing. I had no idea. <laughs> okay, so these these next few slides are just to give you some um, eye candy, some visual inspiration for the the trails, and a lot all of them are listed on that starter kit that I just showed you. But this is the Bay Trail. The Bay Trail will eventually circumnavigate the entire bay, so you know from all the way from San Francisco down and around the bottom South Bay, East Bay on up. Um, and uh, it's right now the completed sections, which are mostly in the peninsula, um, all the way down to like, you know, Sunnyvale, like I said, kind of Alviso. Uh, they're all really great. In fact, there's some awesome, um, like just offshoots that go like straight out into the bay. You're on just this like singular path. You can kind of like go in little loops around the, uh, I think it's kind of an estuary. There's lots of wildlife, lots of birds. It's a huge bird habitat. So if you're a birder, you can combine biking and birding in that way. Um, but yeah, so some of these uh, photos are from around kind of like the more southern places of the Bay Trail. Uh, I really like, I really like it. Car free, easy, fun for the kids, as you can see. So it's a great, a great option. Uh, my other favorite is Crystal Springs. Crystal Springs is a reservoir, um, you know, it, and then there's a path that, that parallels it. And then also on Sundays, Sunday Streets extends the area of, of car free riding um, down to down through Kenyatta Road. So uh, I really like I really like doing this ride. I would do this sometimes from San Francisco to Mountain View for a commute. And it was a really great way to start the day. A little cold sometimes. It was definitely the, the ride I realized that I needed full fingered gloves <laughs> on one time. But yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Uh, <laughs> And this, again, uh, I had no idea that San Jose could offer such great bike paths and experiences. So this is the Guadalupe River Trail. 
and it goes from all the way from you know, kind of southern San Jose north uh, up to Alviso and it goes through downtown so you can see that it just parallels uh, the river downtown has some kind of cool design elements going on there's lots of bridges and there's also just lots of like lush greenery it goes past the airport it really just does it all so uh, highly recommend that if you're looking for a path in the south bay Anna, we have two questions that came inbound. You okay. mentioned bridges. Someone asked about bridges in the Bay Area. And we'll actually include 511.org uh, has an amazing resource of all the communities in the Bay Area and Peninsula, and they detail whether the bridge is uh, bike or pedestrian friendly. So we'll include that in the resources. Um, if you do ride across the bridges, especially East Bay to the Peninsula, just be mindful, it could be really, really windy. So you could encounter some pretty strong winds. It's always good to ride with someone. So maybe you can uh, you, uh, tailgate a little bit. And then the other question that came in, can you offer any tips about riding with kids? Yeah. Yeah, we're getting a lot of questions about riding with kids right now. Uh, I don't have any personal experience with this, but there's lots of great resources. The San Francisco Bicycle Coalition has a PDF that outlines exactly what you should be thinking about when you are carrying kids on bikes, to riding with kids who have their own bikes, to like, you know, different age groups, uh, to rides and routes. So uh, we'll include that as well in the, the follow-up that we send out. Uh, and then Karin, founder of The New Wheel, has, um, she's been doing like a webinar circuit lately about how to bike with families. Um, I know that she uh, personally bikes with her family and she also uh, founded the, the New Wheel, which is an electric bike shop with her partner. Um, and they, uh, they're really, I mean, in a, in a world where I honestly don't find a lot of bike shops that I love. I seriously love this bike shop. I don't have any use for it because I don't have an e-bike, but um, you can check them out and they should be able to get you set up with a, a bike if you're looking for a bike and also give you some some advice so we'll include that in our follow-up as well um, yeah Any, anything else <laughs> you can also recommend a mother load for people that are interested in being inspired by a wonderful story of a mom in portland that just decided to change her life and get rid of her car and rides with her kids everywhere it's a really powerful documentary and very inspiring um, I would share that. We'll include the trailer. It'll motivate you to rent it and watch it on the weekend. Um, yeah, great idea. Uh, a things. We're going to follow up and send a short survey. So if you have ideas on what else you would like us to see as host, we would be more than happy to explore that. We do have a couple more webinars coming up. We have next week, we have um, how to buy a bike. It's a very good webinar that um, Anna's colleague, Robert from Bikes Make Life Better, um, details on the various different models and demystifies how you can determine what bike is for you. And then in October, we have a, a Bike 101, Get Ready to Roll, and then Virtual Fix a Flat. So um, despite the challenges, as I mentioned, of COVID, we have so many opportunities to educate people virtually and we've been so thankful that we've had so many people sign up normally we have 20 to 30 and we've had as many as 80 join us so we thank you for your support on that end um, we will follow up with the presentation the recording a short survey and also for those that um, are taking this class as a be well berry um, we'll be sending out a form that you'll have to validate and sign and return to be well by the end of September. So um, I want to thank Anna and I want to thank all of you. I know your time is really valuable. So we are really grateful that you joined us today and we hope to see you again. Um, share with a friend our, our efforts and keep riding and make sure you're safe and wear a helmet for every ride. Okay, Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye, everyone. Okay.